Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. So today we are looking at some TikToks you have all tagged me in, makeup, beauty related, and I'm just having a little watch and seeing what I think and seeing if I can help in any way. So yeah, if this is your first time here, my name is Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist. I've been doing makeup for 15 years. That's how old I am. I'm not 15 years old. I mean, I've I'm old enough that I've been doing it for 15 years. <laughs> um, and it's my goal here on YouTube to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who is really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then please do consider subscribing. Okay, let's dive straight into it and let's have a look at some of these TikToks, shall we? And let's have a look at our first one. Now, I get tagged in or sent videos a lot about powders making like pores disappear, right? Um, maybe it's something I can show you at the end of a video. In some of these videos, I, in some of the videos, yes, they are using filters, but in some of them, I do not believe they're using filters. And here's why. Because there are powders out there in real life that under the correct lighting will make you look like you have completely flawless skin. Um, but also the upload quality and the quality of video on TikTok is a very low quality to a point where a powder that does like an, an amazing blurring effect can potentially make the skin look completely blurred without any filters or anything like that is because it's a low quality video. So this is why I don't, I'm not keen on like product reviews on TikTok when it comes to skin and texture and everything like that. Cause I mean, there's some people still blurring their face to fuck like some like Victorian photograph, you know, where it's all completely blurred and like, look how amazing this is. It's gonna look amazing. You're blurring it, you know? And I just don't trust that quick review under those quality conditions, over the quality of camera, over the phone quality. Um, um, and I know you can do like good um, videos, but TikTok kind of make it a little bit lesser quality. I believe that there are powders that can blur and I'll show you what I mean on my face in a minute, maybe at the end, because I've just applied a pow powder, but I don't believe it's to that extent. The video is making it look to that extent. You know what I mean? And again, with TikTok, it's all about going viral and making a video that's gonna get loads of views. People are on there lying and saying, yeah, look how blurry I look. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So I always see people on TikTok telling you to put your concealer in this spot and this spot and that's it. Here's the problem. None of the people I've seen telling you to do that actually have dark circles. So I wanna try both ways and see what actually works better. The full under eye or the little dot here and the little dot here. So let's start with the TikTok conceal, which is like right here and right here. And let's call this the Instagram conceal, which is the full under eye. All right, so I'm gonna damp my beauty blender and then I'm going to do my TikTok side first. This to me isn't that much concealer. Okay, that's pretty much all blended. Now I'm gonna do my Instagram side. I think that's pretty much blended. I mean, clearly we can already see the difference. So I was gonna go finish the rest of my makeup and then come back and decide what's better, but like, it's just not necessary. If you have actual dark circles, more product is better. If you just wanna brighten the under eye, less product is better. That looks fucking amazing, that makeup, by the way. Um, yeah, she's not wrong. When people do that like here, here thing, so there's, there's a few ways it's been shared, right? There's the way of people saying, oh, it lifts your face, which it doesn't really that much. And then people being like, this is a correct way to, go, to do concealer. Here's why I prefer doing it that way, but not really that way. There's more to it, is because you're concentrating color or coverage where the deeper shades sit. So for example, you saw on her, for example, where she is a little bit deeper here, I would use the color just there and then just out here and then blend it. It doesn't always have to be here and here. So yes, more product is going to cover. But what we want to do is we want to cover without it looking cakey and like too much makeup, if that's your preference. Like you can absolutely do whatever the fuck you want. But 
with her, and this is what I always do on people that need color correction is, I will use a concealer first that is two to three shades deeper than the skin tone. I'm not about orange color corrector, I don't like it. I just, I think it's unnecessary. When you can get like, you know, the, the redder tones or pinker tones, uh, or peachier tones in concealers already. So I would use that first in the areas where she has, where she needs a little bit more coverage, where it's a little bit deeper, um, to neutralize, to, to level it out with her natural skin tone. Um, so then you have that neutral thing. And then, and I would do that sparingly the whole way across, not lows at all. And then, that's when I would go in with a, a dot here, a dot here, with a lighter shade. Again, one to two shades lighter than her skin tone to brighten and highlight. So we, we've we neutralized that thing. I think a lot of people miss the point with that technique that, yeah, if you're great, if you're 12 years old and you have no dark under eyes and absolutely, you know, no texture under there, then absolutely go ahead and do that. But I did a whole video on this. It was, it was called like my concealer technique, which isn't my technique, by the way. It wasn't made on TikTok. It, makeup artists have been doing it for years and years and years, decades, decades, decades. But I just called it that because a lot of people calling it my concealer technique. But yes, you still, there's still, you can neutralize and not have to do loads and loads of coverage. The reason people are doing this dot dot is because they were over that huge triangle using excessive product. You can use full coverage, but it doesn't mean it has to be excessive and it doesn't have to be more than what you need. Just because it's wasting your fucking makeup. But if you want to do it, then shovel it on, absolutely. But she's, she's absolutely right in what she was saying. Before I can do any more makeup looks, I have to wash my brushes. Lukewarm water. I'm hoping this is actually all of them. This is gonna be some bad soup. I have not washed my brushes in forever. I just kept buying new ones. No one come for me. This is just how I'm doing it. <laughs> I use Dawn because some of the face creams I use for my cosplay are super thick and hard to get out of the brushes. I'm using this little thing to help me. Ooh. Named and amazed at the same time. That is disgusting. Me confused why I'm breaking out. This is why. I let them sit after I scrubbed them and they ran clean. Wow. I'm gonna focus on the handles now. Round two, not bad. I'm gonna rinse and then dry. Shove them clean boys in a suitcase. Low heat, let them dry. She do be loud, but this is the fastest method of drying. Decapitation can be fixed. Where do I begin? <laughs> okay, so listen, let me just say, first of all, I understand. I, I, I hate cleaning, I hate cleaning my brushes. I think it's so boring. My back hurts when I do it. It's just boring as fuck and I, I, I can't, I can't stand it. But when you're cleaning your brushes, however, brushes are a lot more complex than I think people realize. Complex is the wrong word. There's more to them than people realize, you know? Some brushes have weights in them. Some brushes are cut a certain way and hand cut and all this stuff. There's, there's a lot more to them. Yes, we're very, fortunate that, you know, there's a load of affordable brands out there that make great makeup brushes and maybe we can just afford to buy some new ones. But I do think it's really important to care for your tools. So <laughs> there's a few things in that video that perhaps I wouldn't recommend. One of them is soaking the whole brush all together, wetting the whole thing. Listen, so uh, here's a brush. So we have the bristles which have the hairs here. This metal part is the furrow, right? And this is where sometimes um, the the brush can be glued in, it can be clamped and it can be whatever, and then obviously the handle. Um, so inside here, if any product gets into this part of your brush, it can start to really fuck up your brush, right? If oil gets down to there, if water, even water gets down to there, it can start to break down whatever bond is holding onto the bristles and you start to get a misshapen brush, hairs are gonna start falling out, it's gonna be a bad time. So that's why I wouldn't soak the brushes like that. I also wouldn't leave them to dry this way around. I leave them to dry like this, or on the edge of like a table like this, and that stops products from dripping down. Brushes that have, you know what? I'm not mad at the Dawn uh, soap thing. I, I'm not mad at that at all. I will use whatever it takes to get my brushes clean, especially because all my brushes are artificial hair, right? So I'm not worried about how it used to be back in the day when artificial brushes weren't as great as they are now. Shampoo, conditioner, 
or hot oil. No, I'm joking. I wouldn't use hot oil. <laughs> but you know, they had all these, you had to really like really super, super care for the hairs. Whereas now I use washing up liquid on them. I will use makeup removing oil very, very lightly, a tiny, tiny bit like this. And I'll be very careful and I'll rinse it very quickly to make sure none of it gets into the furrow. Ah, my throat's off. Let me just say, <laughs> putting them in a dryer, are you kidding me? That's gonna, again, it could heat up the glue. It could, it could damage the handles. There's so much wrong with that. It is insane. I don't know if that was like a troll situation going on, but that, that, that was intense. But listen, we all have our way to do things and sometimes we don't have the time. And if shoving them in a sink is your thing and you don't mind replacing them after, you know, five months, six months, then do you. I'm not angry at it. I just, if, if you were going to ask me how to clean them, that wouldn't be the way. Okay. This is for my makeup experts. Why the heck does my foundation sit on my skin like this? What can I do to fix it? There are a million reasons this happens and it's a very, very common thing. So I'm gonna go through all the things that could, could be happening with this situation, but there are so many different things that can cause this. Skincare, first of all, it could be skincare in general. Again, I'm not a skincare person, like I don't really know much about skincare, but exfoliating and generally looking after your skin. You always have to have a well-prepared canvas for your makeup. That doesn't mean you can't have blemishes, it just means that you're looking after it as much as you can. Other than that, other than skincare recommendations, which I hope people are giving her, I want to talk about prepping the skin in terms of primer and skincare actually as well. Um, and I always say this, so again, sorry to sound like a broken record, free skincare routines, right, for me, morning, evening, and then I have my pre-makeup skincare routine. Morning is my, you know, whatever. Evening is also my, you know, whatever, recovery for my skin, and repairing, all that kind of stuff. My, my makeup skincare routine is like that, that classic, like, um, beauty, you know, you go into a store and they ask you what kind of skincare you have, dry, oily, whatever. For me, with oilier skin, I take, I, I make my makeup prep literal to that skin type. So I have oily skin. Our goal is to make the makeup last a long time so I don't over prep my skin. I will use a serum, I'll use a primer and SPF, but they are all products that are made for oily skin. Whereas my nighttime skincare routine and my morning skincare routine, aren't just oily skin, you know? Again, our goal is to make our products last longer. So if you have oily skin, stop the oil. If you have dry skin, hydrate enough. If you have combination, do it, hydrate, don't hydrate <laughs> in the areas that you need, you know? When I look at this, there's a few things it, it's, it reminds me of, okay? One is over prep of the skin. Too much moisturizer, too much primer, or too much kind of prep in general, too much skincare. Apply your skincare, and then give your skin a moment to take it in. Do your skincare, finish up your hair, put your clothes on, whatever it is you do. Do something in between, go and make coffee, whatever. But give your skin time to absorb what it needs to. Let your skincare and your skin prep be part of the skin. Let it react with the skin how it's going to. If you have any layer of moisture left in your skin and you find your skin is doing something, and you find your makeup is doing something like this, you're using too much. So I would then blot away any excess or just use a serum as your moisturizer and your primer. Serums leave a really sticky, tacky feeling to the skin, so they're really good. And I'm not talking like an exfoliating serum, I just mean like a hyaluronic acid serum. And an SPF that is more liquid, like a more of a liquid texture. This is my favorite one for underneath foundation at the moment. I'll leave it here. So again, we do want that prep, but we don't want e but we don't want excess products sitting on top of the skin because that's all it is. You're gonna apply your makeup over a layer of moisture and it isn't gonna hold. So that's one reason that could be happening. Second reason, what we call peach fuzz, is that light layer of hair on the skin. Now, that doesn't always mean that your makeup is gonna apply poorly. Some people like to derma play. <laughs> And people are like, oh no, it'll grow back with a beard. No, it won't, you're fine. But that's gonna smooth out the skin and give yourselves a really nice smooth application of makeup. If you don't wanna do that, absolutely fine. However, when you're applying makeup over the areas where this peach fuzz exists, you don't want to aggravate the hairs and make them stand up. So I wouldn't use a beauty sponge because what you're doing then is patting it on the skin like this and you are lifting the hairs up and down. Um, you know, making them stand on end. I wouldn't use a brush where you have to buff like this, because again, you are going, moving them up and down. 
What I would do is use a brush where you can just go like this. Literally the old fashioned way of applying makeup where you're just stroking downwards. You're not going up and down. Imagine your hair's like this. You don't wanna make it sound like this. You wanna press it down. You wanna push that hair down. So drag, drag, drag. Um, light layers at a time. I know it's a really old fashioned way to do it, but it's the only way you're gonna stop the hairs from sticking up. My other reason, oh, this actually comes into skin prep, is the type of primer you're using with the type of um, foundation. What kind of base it has, silicon, water, whatever. Are, we, are, are those bases combining well together? The other reason would be retouching up. So this could be excess powder. Maybe if you get oily in one area, you put too much powder on top as your touch up method it's gonna congeal and make this really horrible texture. So there are, <laughs> there are so many ways this is happening. I hope they find what, you know, a way out of it. It's a really annoying thing to happen. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, let's not use the word best. Let's just not throw best out there, right? Because they're not the best in any way at all. So, again, just made for uh, entertainment because it's a TikTok, but people do take these things seriously. Let's start with the freckles and the, the um, like, oh, there's my hair on this. Maybe I won't show it. Like the tangle teaser thing. Freckles are random and sporadic. When you use a tangle teaser and you do that, you're gonna get a pattern and then you'll have to go around removing some. Um, I don't know what, how she did it, maybe she covered it back up again with foundation, but that we, that transition wasn't quite, you know? Um, so that's no. Um, this one with the eyebrow pomade, I can see I can see how that works, but again, pressure from the brush, you're gonna get, you see how it just kind of, kind of starts and stops right there? You don't get an even application, so what's the point? <laughs> okay, I need to try this, and I'm I'm really annoyed that I'm going to ruin my bronzer. This is another thing. This this wetting the bronzer and then using it as a liquid. Now the only reason, okay, so the only thing, the only time, sorry, I can see this working and not ruining your product is if the pow powder is mineral based, then it should be absolutely fine. However, have you ever had like literally my okay, this is doing it right now. Have you ever? Let me show you. Focus, focus here. Can you see there's like some hard, oh, like harder bits on the bronzer? And this is from when, what did I do? I put a wet brush or a damp brush from my foundation into this. Those hard bits are basically oil or moisture hardening your powder. And then you have to scrape it off to use it again because that, that isn't gonna come off. So wetting this whole thing, I don't quite trust. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna wear it. And I'm, I, I do actually really like this bronzer, so I'm gonna be really pissed off. Completely, completely wet. There it is, completely damp and wet. And then it comes off like, like that, but nothing really to go crazy about. I'm gonna let that go ahead and dry and see what kind of effect it has on the bronzer, because that's the one she was using in the video as well. Um, and I've seen this a lot, and I just think it's such a shame that people might do this and actually ruin their whole bronzer. <laughs> Because makeup can be expensive. So I did just want to give you all an update. This is 24 hours later. And I don't know if you can see, the whole bronzer has this like shininess on it. And when I go to swatch it, it just gets worse and worse. It's now completely unusable. I can't use this. And it's completely fucked up the bronzer. So I'm going to have to scrape off a layer with like, um, like a disposable mascara wand and see if that helps. I hope it does. Also did another one with a setting spray. The first one was done with water, just for experimental purposes. Same thing's happening when I swatch, it goes all weird and flat. And when I try to use it on my hand, zero pigment, completely ruined bronzer. Okay, we're gonna come back to that and we're gonna do the powder in a little bit. Let's just watch this. Round face queens, where you at? It's my time to shine. I'm gonna show you how to contour, highlight, and blush a round face, just like mine. I'm gonna say this in every video. This is about balance and enhancement. 
not correction and cover up. We don't use those words here, okay? Starting with contour on the forehead, you're gonna wanna keep the contour on the sides of the forehead, leaving the top area open to balance out the length. For cheeks, there's two ways you can do it depending on what look you want. To enhance the apple of the cheek, you're gonna wanna go just below the cheekbone and swoop up like this. You see when you smile, that enhances the apple. Another way to do it, which I kind of hated on, but now I kinda like, Starting at the top of your cheekbone, swooping up, and following down by your chin like that. Both are hugging the cheek, but one is a little more sculpted, while the other is more lifted. On the lifted side, I still like to add a line for the chin to define it a little bit more and break up the roundness. From the tip of the chin, I go just on top of the jawline to add more definition. I love to highlight right in the middle of the face to really bring it forward and on the tippy tippy tops of my cheekbones to lift our faces. Middle of the chin to define it a little bit. If you want more rounded, go ahead and add the highlight under the contour connecting to the corner of your mouth. More sculpted, you're gonna go under the sculpt and swoop down where it goes down in the chin. For the forehead, just keep it in the center, you're good. To accentuate the roundness with blush, I like to keep the blush right under the eyes on the apples. Usually people say don't put blush on the apples of your cheeks, but round facers, we can get away with it, okay? For a more sculpted look, I like to keep the blush really high up on the cheekbones. And that kind of brings your face up as opposed to keeping it round. Depends on your preference. Blush on the tip of the forehead balances out the length. Here we are all finished, and now I'm gonna blend. Okay, here we are all blended. This is the rounder side, this is the more sculpted side. Let me know if you try it. If you use methods from one or the other, which you like best, I wanna see you. You look good. Okay, I love you, bye. I love that video. I think that's really, really very informative, and the way it's done is in a way that is very TikTok friendly, you know, with, with a drawing, but is informative to the point where she was like, this is to enhance the roundness this is to, you know, sculpt a little bit more. I thought that was really, 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 really good. And yes, it's the same. If you have a rounder face, this highlight in the middle here, like here, 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 is gonna, um, oh, I don't say correct, because she was literally like, don't say correct, but correct, the, the shape, because it's making it longer. And that's what you want to do with a rounder face, where if you have a longer face, you almost want to make it rounder. So, <laughs> God, we can't have anything, can we? Yeah, that, that was really, really very well explained. I agree with everything in that video. It was perfect perfection. And actually, she has some really amazing... I went through afterwards on TikTok and um, followed her, because the way she does stuff is in such a... It's, it's, an, it's a very educational way without being condes condescending. Condescend condescending? Um... And I really, really like... So, I would go ahead and check out her TikTok account. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about powders, and um, earlier when I was saying about powders that blur the face. So this is the Mystifying Mattifying Powder from Lunatic Cosmetic Labs, which you'll be familiar with if you um, know my videos. And this is one of my favourite powders because I'll show you exactly what it does with minimal effort. Now, bear in mind, this is on a very high quality camera with three lights, one right in front of me here, one right here, and one right here. So let's do this side. If I apply a powder in this area, can you see how it kind of got rid of that blemish slightly as well? When the light catches it slightly, it just completely smooths out this whole area here. Compared to this side, you can see like a little, a few bumps and things like that. Even in these curses right here. Okay, now watch this side and we'll do the same here. Can you see, look, look how blurred and smooth it looks. So if the quality of my camera and the lighting is making that appear like blurred, imagine what a lower quality will do with any fucking powder. <laughs> so I thought, why not just film this on TikTok? So here's my skin in natural light and I'm on the TikTok app filming this and I have the same powder I used and a little brush. And let's see my forehead here, right? You can see there's a lot of um, skin texture on my forehead. You see? See how it's mattifying? But the quality of the filming, exactly the same powder, is making it look like it's making my pores disappear. When actually I still very much have pores. And also as well, TikTok automatically upload with a tiny bit of a beauty filter on. Now this is it with the preset options to zero beauty filter. Let's do my nose. 
you can see it still gives that like poreless effect and that's just like the TikTok app in general like everything disappears and reappears so everything looks like it could be perfect there are powders that do this that exist just the way it looks on TikTok literally looks like a filter blurring the skin so it doesn't necessarily work to that extent okay bronzer update it's completely fucked <laughs> completely ruined um i'm gonna put my finger in put my finger in there no pigments coming off, like the tiniest amount, but you see that darker bit there? See this darker bit here? It gets darker when I rub it now um, because it's pushing that into this into the product. So what I'm gonna have to do is scrape off a whole top layer of this so I can use it again. No, and this is the same with eyeshadow as well. Some eyeshadows we can use damp, some we can't, some we just ruin if we use them wet. Um, so it really does depend on the product. So do be wary. The best thing to do if you wanna use it wet is to scrape it off and dampen it. Don't do it in the actual compact itself or in the actual pan itself because you're potentially ruining your products okay well thank you so much for joining me go ahead and follow me on tiktok it's at robert welsh mua and tag me in things and just don't say it just tag just at me you know thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate you being here and yeah i will see you very very soon thanks bye